as you're growing any kind of business that's technical, you bring on people who are really, really good at their respective role, but they're technicians. They're people who are great at a craft. And being great at a craft and being able to translate that into business, sometimes there's challenges with that. Some people are great at the office culture and they're great at the office stuff and the project management stuff, but, but then they don't have a craft. And so we see this whenever you're dealing with trades, whenever you're dealing with uh, more kind of technical roles or technicians, transitioning into a corporate or office space can be a challenge. So when I was growing the team, uh, I found that we were, we were constantly bumping into the same things. And so I, I developed these five points, these five questions for an extraordinary experience because ultimately as I looked at the different team members, I thought, gosh, like we're all running into the same challenges. So the five points, they're simple. So perception is truth. Uh, yes, however, what's the ask? Understand who's the client. And then the fifth thing, what's valued? So going through those, perception is truth. Whenever you're dealing with clients, it matters if things go well or if things go wrong, but it doesn't matter who's to blame. If you are constantly on it and on it and on it and on it and on it, and the client is constantly missing, 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 at the end of the project, if it doesn't go well, it doesn't matter. You can't go back to the client and say, client, you totally messed this all up. If you're late for stuff twice, then people go, this person's late. If um, they think you look sloppy, then you must be a sloppy person. If uh, you swear a lot and you say, you, you know, this or that, then you must be a crude person. And so perception is truth because how you are perceived is the truth in that person's mind. The first foundation for this was to say, okay, we can't, it doesn't matter what reality it is, it doesn't matter what the truth is, we have to understand how we're being perceived because I do lots of typos in my emails and as a company that's responsible for writing and for crafting messages, if there's a lot of typos, I must be sloppy. Am I capable of writing? I don't know. Can this person even write? Why would I trust them to do my message? Can they even do their job? That's how people think. So perception is truth. The second point, uh, yes, however, I do not like to say no to clients and I don't want my team saying no to clients. You have to be able to push clients though. So we, we developed this thing of like, yes, however. Client, you want everything to be pink? Okay, we can do that for you. However, pink isn't really in your brand colors and it won't really work with your target audience and this and this and this. Okay, client, you want us to do a five week project in two weeks? Yes, we can do that. However, it's going to triple your budget and we're going to have to lose these things. Is that something you want to do? Saying no to people, like clients get super excited about something and then they're like ready to go. And then you're like, no, we can't do that. And it's like, oh, okay. Now, if something is impossible, you have to say it's impossible. Why? But for the most part, yes, however, is a great way to say, client, you're super excited about that. I, I can totally see why that works and we can do that for you but I just want you to know that here are the impacts. Here's the impact to timelines, here's the impact to budget, here's the impact to this, here's, we can do that, but I'm not sure it's the best idea for this reason. And then you're not crushing people, right? You're not saying no to them. Understanding what's valued. Oscar on our team is a super creative guy. When he came in, he felt that everyone valued creativity. We're a creative firm, you're hiring us for creativity. Most of our clients do not value creativity. And you start to run into that when you realize that they in fact maybe uh, value timelines or they value producing cost things for the cheapest thing possible or taking the budget and producing the most content you can for the budget possible or professionalism or uh, strategy or you know yes it has to be it has to look good it has to have some level of creativity but understanding what the client values means that you can change your approach based on what's most important to them. Someone who ultimately at the end of the day has a timeline that they have to hit does not value creativity because the only thing that matters to them is doing the best project we can with the time that we have or the best project with the budget we have or um, ensuring it'll get approved or ensuring it'll pass legal and regulatory. It doesn't matter how creative it is. If the lawyers won't let you release it to the market, then what does it matter? Or what the customer cares about or whatever it is. Right? And so when we're in this industry, we have to understand what our clients value so that way we're not bumping into them and they're saying these people are too hard to work with. Understanding who's the customer is very, very similar. Internally, you have internal customers. If you're a graphic designer, if you're a programmer, if you're an editor, your internal customer may be a project manager or an account manager or creative director. That's your customer. Treat them with respect the way you would any customer. If you're client facing, the person you're working with may not be the customer. It may be the boss's 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 boss. 
And ultimately, if the boss's 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 boss is the customer, it doesn't matter how much your contact likes you or how on board they are. If the boss's 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 boss is the person who's saying yes or no at the end of the day, you better understand who they are and what they value and care about. It's the only way to get the work done. And then, uh, oh, understand the ask, right? What is the ask? People rarely ask for what they really want. Hey, um, is that the final version of this? The answer is yes or no. But, but why am I asking that? Am I asking that because I'm worried? Because what I'm looking at does not impress me? Am I asking that because I need this to go out tomorrow and I want to know where we are in the project? When a client comes and says, can we make a video shorter? Are they asking because it has to be shorter because they have to release it within a 30 or 15 second window and, and that's what it has to be? Or are they asking because it feels slow? Are they asking because the content is irrelevant? Are they asking because they don't like it? Like understanding what the ask is behind the ask is what allows you to actually address those core issues. And too often, we take questions at face value and then try and answer them, right? We want to help people. Answer, 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 answer. And it, and it destroys you because ultimately if the client goes, <clears throat> is this the last version, is this the final version of it? And you're like, uh, uh, no, uh, we have two more versions. We're working on this, we're changing this and this and this, but really they're asking because they're worried about running out of budget or they're asking because their timelines or they're asking because they're disappointed in it. You're not addressing any of those issues by answering the question. Those five things, you know, understanding the ask, perception is truth, knowing what they value, understanding who the client is, and then saying yes, however, was a foundation that we developed just to help us be better project managers, better uh, deliverers of creative, and ultimately have a better client experience. That's good. I mean, some of the things are really important in that, like, they're also not just related to this industry or these specific scenarios, but like, yes, however, is something that you should always be trying to do no matter what your your profession is. Yeah, I mean, so, so you know, of course we're a marketing agency, but even the clients that we deal with, whether you know, you're building custom homes or whether you're in um, finance or uh, you know, you're running an e-commerce shop, people don't like to hear no. You being the one to tell people no when it's out of love, okay. But the second, the third, the fourth time, you're just, you, you appear like someone who is hard to work with when really all you care about is the best thing that's for them. Uh, and I tell clients this, and I've had clients say, like, you're giving me a yes however. And I'm like, yeah, I am giving you a yes however because fundamentally I want you to be aware of the impact that this has and I don't think it's the right thing to do. But that's still not no, right? You are the client. You get to make the decision. And, and so these things... Um, you know, understanding what's valued, understanding who's the client, understanding what is the ask, uh, perception is truth, and yes, however, these are fundamental things that can be applied to any business.